Welcome to Ian Ferguson, the Chief Executive of AIM Listed Mission Marketing Group. Ian, you have 60 seconds to explain why at 132 pence, mission marketing is a good investment. Thanks. Well, the mission's a new national advertising and business communications group. And we're growing very rapidly. Since admission to AIM only a year ago, we've acquired three leading companies and grown turnover from 5 million to almost 80 million pounds on a pro forma basis. Our full year results showed some good progress, and pro forma pre-tax profits are up 22% to 33.7 million, while our online businesses grew by revenues by almost 40%. We also paid a maiden dividend, with pro forma operating, operating profit growth about four times the, the industry. We're pretty pleased with that performance so far. So why are we better placed to continue to outform the market? Well, there are three big drivers. People today are easy to reach but hard to engage. So our agencies produce creative campaigns which combine TV, face-to-face, -face, and especially online and on phone. We focus on hot sectors, uh, national and international clients in food and drink, pharma, property, technology, and environmental. And we've located our agencies outside central London, and that produces a massive 30% cost-based advantage and a resultant very strong set of margins. This year looks encouraging. We've got a strong pipeline, and we'll continue to focus on organic growth and digital and specialist acquisitions. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A couple of questions. Uh, what's your balance sheet like? Uh, we're, we're, we're in good shape. We made these acquisitions. We've got uh, about 18 million of debt and about 3 million cash on hand. So we've got enough to start looking at some further acquisitions. What sort of, uh, how much more debt could you take on, do you think? Uh, we wouldn't like to push it too far. That's us at about 50% debt equity. We could go a little higher. We know we could make one to two more acquisitions of around a million pound EBIT agencies. And that's, that's in our bullseye of size, about 50, 60 people. Uh, and that, that would be perfectly manageable within a comfortable range. RBS have been very supportive, and, and we, we know we can do that. Presumably, though, of course, when you're buying people businesses, you've got to do some debt, but, but mainly equity, because you want to tie them in. Because the worst thing is you buy a people business, and they all sort off and sort of form a new agency. Absolutely right, and, and that has been a threat in the past. And, and what we've tended to do in our deals is around half of the, uh, the, the consideration goes in cash, and around half goes in shares. And those who are non-vendor shareholders, that is the management who will succeed the sellers, are, are highly incentivized with the share and cash through an earn-out structure. Okay, well, final question. I mean, you, you talked there about your online presence. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we're an online company. We think the future is, is through online advertising and that Kieran over on the dead wood press um, is going to be out of a job in a few years' time. Um, you talk about the traumatic growth in online. Is, is that sort of a, a trend you see get continuing? Yeah, I do. I think it's clear that that's going to continue. I, frankly, clients have now largely figured out what's right for their business, which mix of offline and online communications works best for them, where they get the best return on investment, how best to reach and engage their customers. Perhaps a few years ago, that they weren't as adept at doing that. And all the forecasts of doom and gloom for the guys that do stuff on paper and fabulous wealth for those who do stuff online, I think have been more or less proved wrong. There'll be a shift, the balance might move, but it won't be as dramatic as some people say. Thank you, Kieran. So you're not going to be unemployed immediately. Do you have any <laughs> questions for, uh, for Ian? Um, well, I, mean, I think when most investors sort of hear the word advertising, they think of an extremely volatile business, um, and particularly um, vulnerable to changes in economic circumstances. Mm. Um, and there's almost certainly going to be, you know, talk about a slowdown in, in, in advertising revenues, mm. and you're going into that period with quite a high level of gearing. So, I mean, sort of, are you, would you be concerned about that in any way? It is uh, a cyclical business, isn't it? it? It has certainly been in the past a cyclical <coughs> business. I mean, the market in the UK seems to be growing about 4 or 5%. And one of the interesting things is that people refer to the advertising market. In fact, what they're referencing is the media buy market. And so it is true that mainstream media costs may go up or down and, and there may be impacts because of changing uh, interest rates. But only around half of everything we do is advertising. Most of the other stuff is either online, which as I say is growing dramatically, or is in face-to-face -face, or is in other techniques of reaching people cost-effectively. So we feel quite hedged against A, the, 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 any changes in interest rates because we've hedged against them, and, and secondly because our business is pretty well spread and we have this wonderful low cost base by, just like our clients, electing not to have our, in effect, production in central London. Carlos, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, any, why should anybody buy your shares today? Any... Is any, there any news flow? Any there? news flow <laughs> for me. Is there, something you'd like, is there an acquisition you'd like to tell us all about? <laughs> uh, lots of potential acquisitions I'd love to tell you about, and, and some of them very interesting too. Um, and it's for sure that some of the sellers that we talk to are particularly engaged by what we're talking about. Um, 
Uh, th there is a raft of excellent agencies out there. Um, they are showing very fast growth with this low cost base, they're very profitable. Uh, we found that what we have and what some of them could bring to the party when added together give us a dramatic advantage. Um, we are a buy and build. We went to the market on the basis of being a buy and build. Our shareholders expect us to be active in that area and we will be. Okay. Now, look at this fine publication here, AIM Plus Super. News, which came out last night. Um, it's forecasting that you're going to do earnings of 13.7p in calendar 2007, rising to 17p next year and 18.5p in 2009. And that's assuming no further acquisitions. Does that seem plausible enough for you? Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, Seymour Pierce and uh, Charlie Peacock are, are, are not the least uh, neutral and sensible <laughs> of, of, of commentators. And, and no, we feel comfortable with what he's proposing and, and we can see our road clear to deliver these kind of numbers. Okay. Right. Okay, obviously by the AIM news you can get uh, three help tips from last night. Thank you, Ian. We're going to take a short break now. Come back after that to find out whether Carlos is going to back emerging UK investments at 6.5p. Please don't, Carlos. Delcam <laughs> at 420p or Mission Marketing at 132p. And I'll reveal which of the two sensible choices is the best choice. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Final Path Trading Places. The big question is how Carlos Velez is going to reinvest the £199,290 he made by selling Felix in part two. Will it be in his daft idea of emerging UK investments <laughs> at 6.5p? Kieran Roots, Delcam at 420p, or Ian Ferguson's mission marketing at 132p? Carlos, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, as, as you say, emerging market, uh, it, it, it's, 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 point, it's risky. Um, we don't, we, don't, we don't know what's going to happen, but you know, 7.4 seems attractive. This offshore company seems um, they know what, what they, they, they're, they're doing. It's a, it's a fantastic op opportunity to make some cash. Probably quite a speculative and probably, uh, probably risky, not for orphans and widows, as you say. So probably for the purposes of the show, I'll, I'll, I'll have to give a pass on that one. Um, so um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm concerned about the um, the price in yours. It's mm. it's a bit, it's a bit that's high. A, that's probably, probably a fair comment. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's a, it's very interesting though. It's it's in, extremely interesting. I love the fact the P is low. The the market cap is not too bad, and um, you know that it's got money in the bank. You know, it's it's it's, a, it's, a, it's a, what, certainly one to keep an eye on. Um, and well, then we are left with. Uh, this the, uh, this other company. Um, I think, I think yeah. I think uh, for the purposes of of the show, you know, probably it'll be a safe bet to uh, to go with them because you actually paid a dividend, didn't you? We paid a dividend in our first year, yes. And yeah. despite some views that we maybe shouldn't have done, we felt it was important to return the dividend to the shareholders. Yeah. So you know, that's that's. Wait, so it's answer. mission marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Thank Carlos you. has gone for mission marketing. Kieran, do you think that's a bad call? I, I can see the logic behind it. Yes, yeah. so within the context of of a six week or eight week, I have along this competition is going on. You might get more action out of mission marketing than you get. Out of you might, I, I quite like it. it's a long term investment. Carlos went for mission marketing. For its worth, I think Carlos's idea is daft. That's an obvious punt. <laughs> so we can disregard <laughs> that completely. Moving no. on to Delcam, I can Buy see it. the attraction there. It's got cash. That's a great attraction uh, in any investment. It has been consistently profitable, but there's been some volatility in the profit profitability. Uh, I am prepared to accept that uh, it's getting more consistent, but I remember the past, and that slightly deters me. I'm also a little bit nervous about its high exposure to the US dollar. And that leaves us with mission marketing. Well, for starters, its fire instructor taught me how to ski, so thank you, Tim, for that. Uh, and I have to uh, reward you in some way. I joke about the fire instructor, but Tim Alton was previously at a firm called Creston, so he's shown uh, that he can be involved in the buy and build strategy in the sector. He's done it once successfully. So in terms of backing management, Ian seems like a sensible fellow too. I think you should be uh, very tempted by mission marketing. The debt, it's a little bit high, I think. Um, I hope that he doesn't make too many acquisitions over the coming years. The rating, though, seems to be relatively low for what is a clear growth story. So on the basis that you have a relatively low PE, clear growth on the cards and a management team worth backing. I would go for mission marketing. Tomorrow, Franklin Olasuna Konami will be back on the show and the chief executive is from a copper and gold exploration company.
This show will be available for download to be watched as often as you like from 12.15 today, Thursday the 21st of June. We'll be back with a brand new show when I will tell that joke, slightly cleaned up, tomorrow morning at 11am. I hope the markets are being kind to you and I'll see you then.